your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and the title of the message is An Almighty Addiction. An Almighty Addiction, and we're going to be looking at verse 15. So again, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 16, beginning at verse 15. It says, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Again, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that, is, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Now, we live in a world that is a, a world of addiction. According to the National Survey, Survey on Drugs, and this is in, in 2017, that 19.7 million American adults from between the age of 12 and older were addicted to some kind of substance abuse. They were addicted to some kind of drug. So that's over 50%. Now I want to say this is 2021, so we know it's worse now. But what they tell us is this, is that over 50% of this country has at least one person in their immediate family that is addicted to something. So there is the opiate, opiate crisis, the meth crisis, the alcoholism, the addiction to prescription drugs, not to mention pornography, or to mention it, pornography addiction, gambling addiction, uh, a smoking addiction, but there's also the addiction to, to cell phones, and you know, you see that, and there's also the addiction to social media, and so, but today, what I want to talk to you about, as I have read this to you, is that I want to talk to you about an addiction that is actually a wonderful thing, that is actually an awesome thing. We'd all be better off if we tested positive for this addiction. If it was to be found out that you had this particular addiction, it'd be a wonderful thing, and that is an addiction to Jesus Christ. That is an addiction to the ministry of of the things of God. And so what I want you to look at first as we begin to break down this verse, I want you to look at the very first part of it and you see the house. It talks about the house of Stephanus. It says, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it, that it is the first fruits of Achaia. So this house, this house of Stephanus were role models in the particular church that they are going to. And so first of all, I want you to look at their conversion. It says there, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia. So these are some of your very first believers there in that town. They are one of the first ones to, to get saved. Paul also talks about baptizing this household in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 16, you'll see that. But also you see here that this house of Stephanus they have a commitment. It says they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. So this family is known as helpers of the saints. They're known as ministers or doing ministry in their church. And Paul writes that they are addicted. And this does not mean that they have a, a bound or addiction to some kind of substance or habit. It means there, that word actually means that they are addicted by their, their own responsibility they have assigned themselves to do something, to do service. They have done that. They wasn't asked to do it. They just done this on themselves. So what I want to say to you is that this family took it upon themselves, the responsibility of serving the Lord and serving others. If they saw a need, they just handled it. When they saw something going on, they saw a need in the church, they just went about and, and did without being asked, and they just dealt with that need. If they saw something that needed to be done, they did it. And that's what they're talking about here. And here's the thing that I noticed about that, is that you don't have to tell an alcoholic to take a drink. You don't have to tell a drug addict to take a hit. And you don't have to tell a Jesus addict, somebody that loves Jesus, to serve him. Isn't that true? I mean, it's true. But I also want you to see this about the house of Stephanus, that in their service, it says there they had a, it was their addiction. They had a conscious addiction. 
I'm going to give you three C's here. They had a conscious addiction. means that they had addicted themselves. They weren't forced to do it. They wasn't made to do it. They did it on their own. They were conscious that there was a need, and they met that need. But that was also a commendable addiction because it was a good addiction. They, they saw something they wanted, they needed, it needed to be done. They did it. They were in service to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they loved Jesus and they served him. But also it's a cooperative addiction because in verse 16, listen to what it says. That you submit yourselves unto such and that to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. So Paul is telling us and the church and everybody else, you see them, you see how they're living, that's how we need to be. That's how you need to be, how I need to be, is what he's saying. So what I want to do right now, we, we saw the house of Stephanus, but I want to do an honest evaluation of ourselves. And the first thing is this, is how are you acknowledged? Because you'll see right there, if you see that verse, looking at that verse, it says, you know the house of Stephanus. They were known. Now notice what it says. It says, you know the house of Stephanus. That church knew them. And they were known by what they were doing. See, you are known by something. You are known by this church or the church that you attend. You are known by something. Maybe you are known by the fact that you are faithful. They say when they see you, your church says, or your name comes up, they say, oh, they're faithful. Or maybe you are known by dependability. Man, you can depend on them. Boy, if there's a job there or if there's something needs to be done, boy, they, they are dependable. If you give them a job, it is going to get done. That's what you're known as. But you also be in, in, in a, I love you now. You might be known as a once a month there. Oh, we might see them once a month. Oh, we might see them at the holiday. They're they a seasonal person. We, we'll see them at Easter, or we might see them at, Christian, uh, at Christmas. Now, don't get mad at me now. I'm just telling you, you are known. You are known by that. Not, not me. Don't get mad at me, but that's how you are known. But let me ask you a question. How does your family... And your co-workers, those that, that know you the best, how do they know you? How are you known at your workplace? I mean, how are you known at your, at your fam with your family? I mean, when you have a family reunion, I mean, how are you known? When you walk up and the folks see you walking up in your family, how are you known? And then how are you known by those people that know you the absolute best. How do they see you? And when it comes to the things of God, how are you known? What is known about you? Now that can all change today. We see that the house of Stephanus, they were known as people that loved God and ministered to the things of the people they had an almighty addiction. And I was studying about this, and, and I want to ask this question, how are you addicted? You can go on many multitude of websites, and you can find out a list or a number of ways to see if somebody's addicted or not. If somebody has an addiction to something, you can go on there and look and say, and, and see, and you begin to say, well, I think they, they got something going on here. And I began to look at that, and what I think has come to find out is a lot of the things that somebody has an addiction to, or, or you can tell that they have an addiction, it has a spiritual uh, ramification. You can see it spiritually. For example, when somebody is addicted to something, there is an, abo a, an ab abrupt change in the following areas. Number one, their work or school attendance. They start missing. But if somebody has an addiction to Jesus, listen to this in Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. When somebody loves Jesus 
and they are addicted to him, the house of God becomes very important. But then also you see when somebody has an addiction, their quality of work is affected. And we see that in the Christian in 1 Corinthians 3.13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Then also the work output will be affected for the person that is addicted. In the Christian, we see this in John 9, 4. It says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And then the grades of an individual. You know when you have somebody that's a straight-A student and all of a sudden they start getting D's and F's. Is that how they still do it? The D's and F's. I've been out of school a long time, so, okay? So if they start getting D's and F's, you get to thinking, they've been a straight-A student. Something has happened. Something is wrong here. And as a Christian, in Hebrews 11, 2, it says, for by it, it's talking about faith, the elders obtained a good report. When you are a Christian, love Jesus, it's going to show out in how you live your life. And then you see it in how their discipline is. When someone's addicted, things start to go. And for the Christian in 1 Timothy 3.15, it says, But I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. So, first of all, if somebody's addicted, there's going to be an abrupt change in their life. You're going to see some things. And if somebody really loves Jesus... If they're really addicted to him, now I want to tell you this, there's a lot of people that know about Jesus. There's a lot of people that are a fan of Jesus. You may have heard that before. They're just a fan. They, they like stuff about him, but they're not really addicted to him. I mean, he's not really, uh, they're not really all in with Jesus. Another thing we see about somebody that's addicted is that they have an unusual flare-ups at times where they get mad. Or they get hot about something real easy. You know, you talk to them, they used to be nice and kind and sweet. And the next thing you know, they're just blowing up all the time. When you are addicted to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you really, really love him and you're on fire for him, there's going to be a fervent passion in your heart for him and for his house. Listen to what Jeremiah says in 20 verse 9. Now, Jeremiah he doesn't want to talk about God. He said, I'm not going to talk about God no more. I'm not. He says, getting me in trouble. I'm getting all kinds of trouble by talking about him. But look what happens to Jeremiah here. And this is in verse 9 of chapter 20. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Because Jeremiah said, I'm just not going to talk about God no more. I'm not going to mention his name, and I'm not going to talk about him. But he was so on in love with God. Listen to what happens. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay saying, I can't help it. I can't help but talk about Jesus, or about God. I can't help it. Now, I'm getting in trouble and they're getting mad at me, but I can't help talking about him. And see, when someone's addicted, they can't help doing what they're doing. And when you really love Jesus... You're going to have it inside of you, and you can't help but talk about him. And you're going to have a passion for his house because Jesus had a zeal for the house of God. Listen to John 2.17. It says, And his, his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thy house hath eaten me up. Jesus had a zeal for the house of God. And I wonder, do you have a, a passion and a, a heart a a fever about the house of God and the things of God. But then another thing you notice about someone that is addicted, did y'all with me this morning? Another thing that you see about someone that is addicted, they withdraw from the normal routines and responsibilities. Now I know I've dealt with folks that, that are addicted and so have many of you, and you see a lot of these things, but things that they used to be involved in they're not important anymore. And their priorities change when there's an addiction. Notice what God says here in his word 
about the person that is addicted to him. You understand what I'm saying? Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So a person that, that is super in love with Jesus, it's going to be him first in their life. But then there is a, another thing, is a general change in overall attitude. So there will be a noticeable transformation in their spirit and how they act. Life will be no longer about them. It will be about what they're doing. And that's the way a Christian will be when they're addicted to Christ. Listen to first or Second Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When a person has given their life to Jesus, that old lifestyle is gone. And they got a new lifestyle now. And then there is the deterioration of their physical appearance, or they let themselves go. Can I say it that way? They let themselves go, and they're not worried about themselves anymore. When a person is a Christian, they stop worrying about me all the time, and they start worrying about our... I, say to you, I hate to use the word worry, but they start concerning themselves about those around them. In Philippians 2, 4, it says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That means that when you're in the church, it won't be about you being, getting all the recognition or whatever. It'll be about everybody else around you. What can I do to make this brother better? What can I do to help this sister be better? How can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? How can I help you? It won't, and then when you're doing that, guess what? That other person that is doing the same thing will be the one that's praying for you and say, let me help you. You understand? See how it is. But then there's also this thing that I noticed, and I have seen it, and you have too, that they'll wear sunglasses at an inappropriate time. I mean, they'll, they'll cover their eyes because addicts put up a guard against their eyes because they don't want nobody to see it. And they also become sensitive to light. And so they protect their eyes. Now listen to this. You might think this is strange, but listen to what a person of, of God will do. This is in Psalms 101, verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the works of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. So a person... So listen to me. A person that is addicted to the things of God will not allow the outside things of this world to be, to infer, to, in, let's see, well, how can I say this? Mess with what they're doing for Christ. It won't infiltrate, that's the word I'm looking for, their life. So they won't take in things that could harm them. For example, now you might not like this, but I'm just going to just be straight with you. There are certain things that you watch that you don't need to watch, and you know you don't need to watch it. And, was, and, and you know that when you, you watch it, you catch yourself repeating or saying some of the things that you have watched. And if a guy starts watching pornography and doing stuff like that, he stops looking at his wife as the love of his life and the woman that he loves and cherishes and starts looking at her as an object. So when you start looking at things like that, it's going to mess you up. So an addict will protect their eyes because it hurts and they don't want nobody to see it. But a Christian addict is going to be someone that protects their eyes from the things of this world to keep it from hurting them. Y'all understand? Some of the things that we listen to, we watch. Those things affect you. If you don't think so, get around somebody. Now, I don't curse, but if you get around somebody that curses a lot, then all of a sudden you hit your hand with a hammer and you just hit and you say something, you think, where'd that come from? It's coming from that, what you've been taking in. I see some of y'all smiling, so y'all must have either done y'all bad, bad carpenters or you've been cussing, right? And so we see that. So they wear sunglasses at inappropriate time. And then this is another thing that, that, that I saw too, is this, is that when someone is an addict, 
They'll wear long sleeves at inappropriate times because they don't want you to see what they're doing. They don't want you to see it. And when everybody else is, is taking off their clothes, an addict will keep theirs on because they don't want nobody to see anything. And so when everybody else says it's appropriate to take off your clothes, they keep theirs on. See, we live in a time in a society now where the society tells you it's all right to take all your clothes off. Right? All you have to do is setting the all you have to do is setting the parking lot of Walmart and watch people walk in and you can say they need to put on some clothes, right? You see it. Now listen to this. It ain't just me. Now this listen to me. It's not just me. Listen to what the word of God says about it. In first Peter two nine it says, But you are a chosen generation. Now listen to what it says. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. This is you as a Christian now. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You're not to live like the world. You're to be different than what the world is. Listen to 1 Peter 2.11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. That means that you're a stranger and pilgrim in this world. You don't belong here, right? You're passing through. You're a missionary in this world. So you two, listen to what the rest of the verse says. Abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Now, I didn't want to get off just on that. I'm just telling you what the Word says, okay? The other thing is this, is they, that when somebody is an addict, they have an association with those that are known addicts. Because I know this for a fact. If I'm looking for somebody that's got an issue, guess what I do? I find their friends that have the same thing. And I go there. And that's where I usually can find them. And try to get them out of that situation. And so that to bring it back to the Christian person, you can tell a lot about a person by who they hang out with. You remember mom and daddy said, be, be careful who your friends are? Y'all remember that? Some of y'all do, right? Y'all remember that, don't you? You remember mom said, be careful who your friends are. Don't be associated with that person. Why? Because your friends can have an influence on your life. 1 John 3, 14 says this, We know that we have passed from death and life because we love the brethren. When you are a Christian addict, I I sound, I, I found, when I say that, it just sounds a little strange to me. But when you love Jesus, when you're really in love with him, guess what? You're going to want to be around the people of God. You're not going to be away from them. You're going to want to be with them, around them. That's going to be who you associated with. And then there's a secretive behavior that they have. Or there's a they hide things from folks. And see, they have a secret life. And see, a Christian has a secret life that's only known to them and God. Listen to what it says in Matthew 6, 3 and 4. It says, But when thou doest alms, means when you do good things, the deeds, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. The alms may be in secret, that the alms will be in secret, and thy father which seeks see it in secret himself shall reward thee open. It means that they do things that doesn't matter. They're not trying to get noticed by anybody. They do secret things. I mean, they do things that nobody else knows is going on, but they do good things and help folks. In Matthew 6, 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth thee seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So it means that, that a person that is addicted or has an almighty addiction, they get in their prayer closet. And you know they've been in the prayer closet because you can see what's going on outside their life. Amen? And then there's this last one. And there's a poor attempt to avoid attention and suspicion. They do their best. An addict will do their best to try to hide the fact that they're an addict. But eventually, something comes out. They can't hide it. It's going to be seen. Um, 
and they do it for their trial for a long time, but it's eventually going to be known because you can look at all the rest of them we've talked about, and you'll see it, and all of a sudden you'll know there's something there. And see, a Christian can't hide the fact that they're a Christian. See, there is no undercover Christians. There is no Secret Service Christians. There are no FBI Christians. Let me say it that way. There is no spy Christians. They ain't nobody hid out that's a Christian. Because if you are a Christian, if you really love Jesus, it's going to show out in your life. It is going to show out in your life. Matthew 5, verse 14, going into verse 16. Ye are the light of the world. Don't you like that? That Jesus is telling you that you are the light of the world. Yeah, some of y'all don't like it. Look at me. Say, yeah, I like it. Let's hear it. Come on. I like it. Let's hear it. Say, I like it. Good, good, good. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all them that are in the house. So God is telling you, he says, you are light of the world. God's saying, you are light. You are God's light at your workplace, at the school you go to, at the supermarket you shop at, when you in the parking lot or in the traffic on the road, you are a light. That means don't be giving anybody the finger and cussing and doing stuff like that. That means you are a light where God has got you at. And God says, you know, you don't get a light and, and cover it up. You put a light out so it lights. So see, so God has got you where you are. Listen, don't, be, don't get confused or get discouraged and say this right here. Well, I'm not doing that. I'm not that important. Yes, you are. God loves you and he's, he saved you and he's got you as a light and he'll use you if you let him. So we need to take the basket off. Listen to what the rest of it says. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is heaven. God is saying, let your light shine. And so that's the question I want to ask you. Are you letting your light shine? And as we come to the, to, to the end of the message, I give the, the invitation. I want to ask you a question. What are you addicted to? If you are addicted to the things of this world, I mean, if you think this world is what it is, and this world is where it's at, and this world is what I want, I'm going to tell you something. You can get every piece of gold, every piece of silver, every piece of fame, every bit of notoriety every car every house everything that this world has to offer and die and go to hell because it doesn't is no value compares nothing to your soul listen to what matthew 16 26 said for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul your soul your eternity with Jesus Christ is more important than anything that this world has to offer it. But this world, the Bible tells us there's more people on the broad road addicted to the things of this world on their way to hell than they're on the narrow road that leads to life. What are you addicted to? I got two questions here. What are you known for? What are you known for? You're known for something, right? And that has nothing to do with your pastor, has nothing to do with that person next to you, it has everything to do with you. What are you known for? And then how about your house? We found out about Stephanus's house. We found out what he's known for. And the first thing we saw, we saw his conversion. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And then there's this. Is there commitment in your life? Are you committed to the things of God? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? 
And are you, do you have an almighty addiction? Amen. Amen.